The Galaxy S series defines what the Samsung flagship experience is. It not only sets the tone for Samsung, but also for the rest of the industry since it is the first major launch of the year. With last year's S10 series, they introduced a third variant, the S10e, which was like Samsung's version of the iPhone XR, providing a lower barrier of entry. This year, however, they went the opposite way with the S20 Ultra. It's like the S20 Plus on steroids, so much so that it feels like you're holding a Galaxy Note device. It's big not only in size, but also in features. Let's see what it's all about. At 6.9 inches, it beats out even the Note 10 Plus as Samsung's new biggest smartphone. Since this phone is among the direct follow-up to the Note 10 series, it shares some similarities in design. The screen still curves towards the edges, but more subtly compared to previous generations. This allows for thin bezels on all sides. The top bezel achieves this, of course, thanks to the returning punch hole camera at the center. In the hand, however, it feels nothing like the Note 10 Plus. The S20 Ultra has curved corners as opposed to the boxier shape of the Note 10 series. It's also slightly heavier and thicker than the Note 10 Plus, which only makes me imagine just how big the Note 20 series will end up being when it launches later this year. Checking out the back, we get a nice curved glass panel that intersects with the metal frame. This is definitely not the focal point of this portion though. It's definitely the huge protruding rear camera module. It takes up nearly a quarter of the back panel and includes four cameras including the periscopic telephoto lens. Moving on to buttons and ports, we get the power and volume buttons on the right side. At the bottom, we get the USB-C port, main microphone, and downward firing loudspeaker. On top, secondary noise cancelling microphone and hybrid card tray that can accommodate either two nano-sized SIM cards or one of those plus a microSD card up to one terabyte. With the rear camera module being the focal point of the S20 Ultra's design, I must say that nothing else is special. That's not to say it's bad since it does take a lot of design cues from the Note 10 series design language. It's just not striking in any particular way. It's simply a big phone with a big set of cameras. But there is nothing wrong with that. Taking a closer look at the display, we got a 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED screen with a maximum resolution of 3200 by 1440 and a maximum refresh rate of 120Hz. Even though you can only get 120Hz at Full HD+, it's a huge leap for Samsung as this only indicates that their future flagships will have high refresh rate screens as well. Also, the next logical step seems to be 90 or 120Hz at QHD, which is quite promising if you ask me. You still get the option to drop down to HD+, or 1600 by 720 if you want to maximize battery life. The opposite of that is opting for Full HD Plus at 120Hz. This will certainly drain your battery life faster, but boy does it feel amazing. Sure, you won't get much out of it for most gaming and media consumption, but mundane uses such as web browsing, social media, and email suddenly feel so much better when objects on your screen move really smoothly. However, the QHD Plus mode still does have its uses, especially when watching high-resolution videos and for doing creative work. No matter what resolution you choose, the screen looks great, thanks to deep blacks, vivid colors, and solid brightness even for outdoor usage. Last year in my Galaxy Note 10 Plus review, I said it was the ultimate multimedia device. Now, the S20 Ultra screen is bigger, but only by a tenth of an inch. The audio is amazing, but not any much better than last year. Therefore, de facto, this is the new ultimate multimedia device, but not by a lot. Compared to the preceding S10 and Note 10 series, the S20 series as a whole gets a lot of upgrades in the camera department, However, this is more so for the S20 Ultra. The rear module consists of a 108 megapixel wide angle, 48 megapixel periscope telephoto, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a time of flight 3D camera. For selfies, we got a 40 megapixel shooter, which is a substantial upgrade from previous generations of Galaxy flagships. Shots from both the front and main rear cameras produce excellent photos in good lighting conditions. In typical Samsung fashion, colors are a bit on the extremely saturated side, but we get a lot of detail and wide dynamic range anyway. Skin tones, while not really natural, look flattering for the subject, and the beauty mode isn't so aggressive. Now, if there's any feature that's heavily marketed for the S20 Ultra, it's definitely the 100x space zoom. 
I'm gonna say it now, it is gimmicky, at least for me. I'll admit you do feel really cool, especially the first few times you use it, but in practice, you might not end up using it a whole lot. It can zoom pretty far, but the resulting image is very soft, washed out, and almost unusable. You will only be able to take decent images in good lighting, and for shots of the moon, it's a bust. The ultrawide camera surprisingly isn't that far off from the main camera in terms of color at least. Detail certainly isn't as much, but shots are still very much great and usable. Checking out night mode real quick. Now I'm not that big of a fan of Samsung's night mode as it does more harm than good to the image in most dark situations. For the good however, it does brighten up shadows which shows details that would otherwise be pitch black. As for video, the S20 Ultra can now shoot up to 8K at 30fps or 4K at 60fps with the rear camera and up to 4K 60fps for the front camera. 8K video is a huge upgrade especially for a smartphone, though most people might not be able to appreciate it immediately due to the lack of an 8K display, but the benefit is still there. Viewing 8K videos on a 4K display still produces more detail as you get roughly 4 times the amount of data and resolution. However, in practice, it's a stepping stone in Samsung's camera evolution. There are some kinks that require sorting out which include poor stabilization and video artifacts. Most users will be perfectly happy with 4K at 60fps or the newly improved super steady mode which granted still shoots at 1080p but we still do get much better results compared to last year's models. One new feature though I'm really loving from the S20 series is the single take mode. You take an 8 second video using all rear cameras and almost instantly the camera AI generates the best images and short videos. It's not gonna be the best quality since these are still taken from videos but you surely won't miss capturing another once in a lifetime moment again. The S20 Ultra we have here is running the new Exynos 990. It's based on the Exynos 980 which is Samsung's first mobile platform with an integrated 5G modem. Unfortunately, we were unable to test out the 5G capability of the S20 Ultra as 5G infrastructure here in the Philippines is still in development. As such, the S20 Ultra's 5G functionality here in the Philippines is disabled for the meantime according to Samsung. But this may indicate the possibility of a future software update that will unlock the 5G capability for this phone. Performance is nothing short of blazing fast. Any task thrown at the S20 Ultra will be easily handled with its beefy chipset. The unit we have here has 12GB of RAM which is way more than enough to handle very heavy multitasking. There's even an option for 16GB of RAM which I don't even know how to feel about. I mean that's as much RAM as my gaming laptop and PC have. Our synthetic benchmark results show insane scores all the way from the almost 500,000 Antutu V8 score to the 1.5GB per second sequential read on our UFS 3.0 internal storage. For software, we get One UI 2 on top of Android 10 right out of the box. There aren't many significant changes from the original One UI, but the intent is still visible. Samsung's big idea behind One UI was to make it user-centered, allowing us to more effectively interact with the phone. So for One UI 2, that spirit still lives on, but can still be definitely improved in the next iteration. For example, I really like how app permission requests are now shown at the bottom of the screen instead of right in your face in the middle. But another example, I'm also not a fan of the new camera UI. All the other modes are kept in the More submenu, whereas I prefer being able to swipe to my intended mode since I can do that with just one finger. Either way, I'm very satisfied with One UI 2 and it's right up there with Oxygen OS as my favorite Android skins. As for battery, the S20 Ultra gets a huge 5000mAh lithium polymer battery. Given that this is the beast in the S20 lineup, I don't think anything less would have been appropriate. I've been honestly using the phone at Full HD plus 60Hz most of the time, only bumping up to 120Hz from time to time, and only using QHD when watching movies. With this usage, I can easily get more than one day before I look for the charger. For charging, the S20 Ultra supports up to 45W fast charging which is great. It's a premium feature that's exclusive for the S20 Ultra though I hope it's a standard feature when the Note 20 series comes out. We also get wireless fast charging up to 15W as well as reverse wireless charging at 9W which kept my Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus happy. The S20 Ultra has a lot to prove to justify its ultra high price of just under 70,000 pesos. For 14,000 pesos more than the S20 Plus, 
you're essentially getting a bigger screen, a bigger battery, faster charging, a new set of cameras, and the vague possibility of 5G, here in the Philippines at least. The first three editions definitely justify an increase in price, but the latter two? The S20 Plus's cameras can basically do whatever the Ultra's cameras can except the 100x space zoom, which is gimmicky at best anyway. As for the possibility of 5G, again, it's vague. On the other hand, despite that, you currently cannot find another phone quite like the S20 Ultra. Unless another manufacturer decides to go head-to-head -head with this device at every specification, we probably won't see anything beefier until this year's Galaxy Note series arrives. So that wraps it up for our full review of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. What do you guys think about this phone? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yougatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey. Guys, stay safe, stay home, and stay hydrated. Ah, uh, tastes like hydration.